Today's message is titled, Remembering the Lord. We're going to continue looking at Psalm 42. We're going to be uh, finishing up the chapter. We'll be picking up with uh, verse 6, going to uh, verse 11. But how many times have we forgotten the Lord? I mean, when we go through times of trouble, times of distress, times of depression, times of hardship, we seem like we, we uh, forget about God. It seems like we go through these things and we try to handle them ourselves. We try to take care of ourselves. We, we say to ourselves, I got this, I can do this, I can get through this. But when we go through it and it gets harder and harder and harder, we try harder and harder, and we keep trying, we keep trying, and we realize that we're not getting anywhere. But then there's times that when we do remember God going through trial, times of trial and hardship, we seem like we want to blame God. We seem like we want to accuse Him. We, we want to uh, Say, God, where are you? Why why is this happening to me? What are you doing to me? And then we usually accuse him of not caring. Of he's lost, he doesn't love us anymore. If he does, why are we going through things like this? And you remember in Mark 4, when the disciples were going across the Sea of Galilee, they kind of went through the same thing. When they got in the midst of the sea, there was a storm that come up and so the waves were crashing over the side of the boat and they were trying their hardest to get the, the water out and they found Jesus asleep in the back of the ship laying on a pillow and they came to him in Mark 4.38 and said, Master, care not that we are perishing? Do you not care that we are dying here? But So they were panicking and they were accusing him of not caring. But all I had to do was just say, Lord, that we're in the midst of the storm and we're afraid we're going to die. And then to ask him to help them out. Or, or I don't know what they were, what they were wanting, you know, expecting him to do other than wake up and say, hey, we're dying, you know, help us out. But for some reason, we have this mentality that we should go through life without problems. Without any kind of hardship, without any heartbreak, without any discouragement, without any persecution, without any troubles. But we don't know where that mentality came from. We think the Christian life should be all about sweet smelling flowers and uh, ice cream with sprinkles on top. And it's not like that. And when things don't go our way, when things don't go according to plan, we... We start thinking and blaming God that it is His fault and He should do something about us. But we're not exempt from any trials in our lives. The Christian life is full of troubles, trials, sometimes distresses, sometimes depression. Many of us who's lived long enough will know that that uh, that we've faced our number of trials, our number of troubles. And as we looked at last week, we could handle troubles if we have our God to turn to. And as soon as those troubles start coming, as soon as, they, as soon as we're faced with them, as soon as the storms start coming, we can turn to God and God, I just see this happening in my life. I don't know what to do. Give me the strength to endure it. But as we continue to look in Psalm 42, we can see that the psalmist is facing a similar issue. He is going through what he described as storms in his life. He remember last week he is in, he is in a dry and thirsty land, and he's longing for the Lord. His enemies constantly question him, "Where is your God?" And this brings him to weeping. He becomes depressed, especially when he starts thinking about yesteryear, thinking about what he was able to do when he was able to go to the temple freely. And so what is a, what is a person supposed to do in a time like this? How do they 
snap out of this? How do they get out of this? They, they tried, in verse 5, said, Why are you cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieting me? Hope thou in God, for ye I shall praise him for the help of his countenance. This encourages him. It lifts him up out of his, his uh, dark cloud that's hovering over him, strengthens him for a little bit, and then guess what? His depression comes back. He hits rock bottom again. As we noticed last week, this seems to be an up and down. This seems to be a roller coaster. Uh, we, we have good times. We have bad times. We're on the mountain. Then we're down in the valley. So his uh, depression comes back. This time he begins to wonder if God has forgotten him. Many of us know that depression comes in cycles. But it is faith that pulls us out of those of those cycles, pulls us out of that depression. It is remembering the Lord that will get us through the times of depression. When troubles and trials come our way, and this brings us to depression. We we'll begin to question God. We begin to doubt God. But it is in times like these that we should continually wait for Him. And praise Him for His help, praise Him for His salvation, for His deliverance. And we should wait confidently in God's salvation. And as we looked at last week, that takes time. It requires patience. But with that intro out of the way, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity to look into your word, to see what your word has to say about our troubles and our trials. And Lord, see how this psalmist handled when he went through periods of depression. And Lord, pray that as I proclaim your word today, that you'll give me the uh, clarity of mind to be focused on your word. And Lord, we pray that the words will come out clear. They'll be understandable. And Lord, that we will be equipped to face whatever comes our way this week. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So Psalm 42, picking up with verse 6, he says, Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites from the hill of Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me, yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me, my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. So the first thing we want to see here when this depression comes back to the psalmist, he is downhearted again, he will remember the Lord. And that's found in verses 6 and 7. Some manuscripts, some of the older manuscripts, take the first phrase in verse 6 and ties it to verse 5. So if you're to the end of verse 5, uh, if you look at it, he says, Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance, O oh my God. But he put, uh, the translators put it here at the beginning of verse 6, which leads us to think that he is beginning to pray during his time of depression. He is remembering the Lord. And so he tells God how he feels. He says, my heart, that is, again, my soul is cast down. He's, he's, he's gone to the source of his strength, the one who can help him, the one who can strengthen him, the one who can deliver him, and that is our Lord and Savior. It is our God. He is telling him, says, my heart is depressed, my heart is dejected, my heart is bowed down. He has nowhere else to turn. Even though he rebukes himself of his depression, he is still cast down. 
He is still in anguish and he's still burning down. He finds no comfort in himself. We're going to have all the self-help books in the world. They may give us some good ideas on what to do. We may go through a 12-step program that tells us what we can do, but nothing can pull us out of that depression like coming to God, seeking after Him. Remember last week we looked at that the psalmist was um, questioning himself, why are you cast down? You know, sometimes we get focused on the wrong thing in life. He was focused on his circumstances, he was focused on his persecutors, his harassers, and he was focused on the past, and these things discouraged him, depressed him. But yeah, now he goes to God, God, I am, my soul is cast down within me. He will remember the Lord even though he feels like he is a thousand miles from him. Even though, again, he's longing for the Lord, he's longing for that day he could come back to the temple to worship God, to uh, be in his presence, but yet he will remember him. He will remember God's faithfulness and mercy in times past. Psalm 77, verses 6 through 11 says, I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with my own heart and my spirit, my diligent search. Will the Lord cast off forever? Now will he, will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Does his promise fail forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Selah. And I said, this is my infirmity. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember... Thy wonders of old. So the psalmist is calling to mind the song in the night and begins to wonder if God, if God will cast off forever. Has God forgotten me forever? Has he rejected me forever? Has his favor, has his grace, has his mercy come to an end on my life? So the psalmist is going through trials and tribulations. He's depressed and he's discouraged. And he's disheartened. He's wondering if God is going to cast him off forever. He's wondering if God's mercy has come to an end. Is it gone? He could be thinking God has forsaken him and he is far from helping him. He could be thinking that God is not hearing his words. He could be thinking that God is not hearing his prayers. The psalmist will do as Jonah did when his soul fainted. He said, when my soul fainted, I remembered the Lord. In Jonah 2 7. He said he will remember God from the land of Jordan and of the Hermonites and from the land of Mazar. This describes the distance between him and God. He is not able to go to the sanctuary, so he feels that he's a thousand miles from the Lord. He feels that he is at the ends of the earth, so far from being in the presence of God. But yet he seemed to forget that God has still got his eye on him. God is still watching him. And he has not forgotten him. God, He cannot forget God during times like this. This will be a time... Now we cry out to Him, lift up our, our complaints, how, our, how we are feeling. He feels that He's at the ends of the earth, yet He'll still cry out to Him when His heart is overwhelmed. The land of Jordan and Mount Hermon place Him somewhere north of the Sea of Galilee. And from the hill or from the mount, little mount of Mizar, no, nobody knows where that area is, but it may be somewhere close in the vicinity of the Jordan and Mount Hermon. So he is miles from the Jerusalem, from Jerusalem where the temple is located. And so now he's wondering if God has forgotten him. 
And this area is, the, is where the headwaters flow into the land of Jordan. The river has its source in the mountains of Hermon. The rains and the mountain snow become torrents of raging waters that flow down the mountain into the land of Jordan. And so the psalmist is telling us that he is drowning in this river and the raging sea, the raging uh, waves of the flow of water. He said, deep calls to deep at the noise of your water spout. A water spout is a type of tornado formed over the water. So you can picture him in the midst of this raging sea. The water spout is stirring up waves and it's wave after wave after wave. That's what the deep calls unto deep. And these are the waves and the billows. They're causing wave after wave to come over him. So you can feel that you can see that the psalmist is struggling to get air. There's nobody there to help him. He's crying out to God during this time. The term waves refer to large cat waves. The term for billows refer to the waves that are curled over. So that tells you how big these waves are that are crashing over him. Enough to make anybody want to reach out to God for help. When you're way too deep, you have no one to help you out, you have nowhere to go to, you have nothing to cling to, you can still cry out to God, you can still cling to Him. But he said, the psalmist says, God's waves and billows have passed over Him. So basically he's saying he's drowning in the waves that come one right after the other. He's referring to the overwhelming waves. Basically, he's making a reference to these waves refer to trouble after trouble. He's going through one set of troubles come, another comes right after it, and then another comes right after it. It's like the waves and a storm. They seem like they do not stop. They keep on pounding. They keep on hitting. So troubles come like waves in a raging river. This is what Job experienced in Job chapter 1. Remember when he lost his children, his, uh, all his cattle, his livestock, his sheep, his servants, and, and his camels, all these. He lost all this in, in one blow. They just came one right after the other. Uh, uh, Jeremiah 4.20 says it's destruction upon destruction. Ezekiel 7.26 calls it mischief upon mischief. He's saying that these storms are raging against him. They constantly keep pounding him. He is drowning. They are drowning him. So he feels that during the midst of this, he feels that God has forgotten him. Even though he is drowning in his troubles, his soul still longs for God. He's still longing for the Lord. If anything, the storms increases his thirst for God. And you can hear him now. He's drowning every time he can get a catch of breath. He's probably saying, Lord, save me. As Peter did when he I realized he was drowning in the sea. Remember when he walked on the waves? And then another one comes. He gets swamped. Overtaken by the waves. Overwhelmed by the waves. He comes up for another gasp of air. He said, Lord, save me. And then another one comes. But then the psalmist contends that God has brought these troubles in his life. He could be saying as the psalmist in 88.7, Thy wrath lieth hard. Upon me, and thou has afflicted me with all thy waves, Selah. The Selah again means to pause, to think about this. Psalm 88, 15 
through 17 says, I am afflicted and ready to die for my youth up. While I suffer thy terrors, I am distracted. Thy fierce wrath goeth over me, thy terrors have cut me off. They come round about me daily like water. They can pass me all about all together. Does this sound like something we have done? Does this sound like we have something we have experienced? When we have troubles and we have trials, when we have hardships, where you turn around and say, God, what are you doing this to me? What is going on? We find that our troubles come like waves and a raging sea. And the first thing we want to do is accuse God. What the psalmist is doing here. There's times then when we go through this, we say, God, why did you do this? Or we may say, God, where are you at a time like this? But there's times like this we should not blame God. There's times like this we should be crying out to Him. Deliver me from the mire, and let me not sink. Let me... But let me be delivered from them that hate me, and of the deep waters. Let not a flood of waters overflow me, nor let the deep swallow me up, nor let the pit shut her mouth over me. It's in Psalm 69, verses 14 through 15. The psalmist is facing his persecution from his enemies. They are constantly coming after him. So he is driven from the temple, driven from the Lord. So he, he feels like God has forgotten about him. He's blaming God for the troubles. Like many of us do when troubles come like waves in our life. It is to our, our, our second point that even though he is drowning, even though the storms are overwhelming him, He's remembering the Lord, but in that same time, he is confident in the Lord. And that's his verses 8 through 10. So the psalmist begins to express his confidence in God. Seems like he's drowning in these, in these uh, waves, in this raging river, in this storm. He knows where his help comes from. He is confident in the Lord. He knows where he can find help. He uses the name Jehovah to express that God is faithful. Yes, in the midst of our storms, in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our troubles, God is faithful. But you may say, well, how can God be faithful during times like this? Why would God allow these things to come into my life if he loves me if he cares for me that is where our faith is tested we may not understand but we know we can turn to the Lord for help we can do like the psalmist there we can place our confidence in him he has confidence that God will deliver him he may be drowning, but he has confidence that God will bless him again. He may be drowning, but he has confidence that whatever God commands, it will come to pass, that it will happen. Even though the waves are crashing over him, he is being swept away by the current. He has confidence that God would command or appoint his loving kindness over him. His loving kindness is his faithfulness. His loving kindness is his mercy. God is faithful in that he will not forsake him. God will show mercy on him in that he will not allow this storm to destroy him. He has confidence that God's love and kindness will be with him through these storms. When the waves and storms cease, it will be by God's command. Again, it requires patience. Again, we can go back and we say, well, where is God in times like this? Why did God do this? 
We need to wait patiently on God's salvation, on God's deliverance. It is God's love and kindness that we're not consumed in our troubles and our trials. We allow them to come in our lives to test our faith, to cry out to Him a little more, maybe each time. He says, In the night His song will be with Him. God will give Him songs in the night. At the end of the stormy day, when you survive the torrent, the waves, the wind, when he lies down on his bed at night, God's son will be with him. The psalmist will sing of the mercy and the love and kindness that God commanded on him. At this time, he will praise God for his mercy during this time. He will think over the day of the events. Thank God that he was able to, that his strength and that God's mercy got him through another day. At night he'll praise God during this storm. Sometimes we find it hard to praise God and in times of hardship, in times of trouble, in times of trials, But we, but we need to remember the Lord, praise Him, thank Him for whatever's going on in our lives. Like the old song goes, I will sing praise, I will lift my voice, I will sing praise, I made my choice. No matter the trials that come in His, his way, no matter the storms that he, he may face, God's faithfulness, and mercy will see him through. God is his hiding place. God will preserve him from trouble. He will surround him with shouts of deliverance. Psalm 32, 7. When he lies down at night, he will think about God. In Psalm 63, 6. He will be joyful in glory and sing aloud upon his bed. Psalm 149, 5. In Isaiah 30, 29, he said, You shall have a song as in the night when the holy solemnity is kept, and gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe to come into the mountain of the Lord, to the mighty one of Israel. He will sing praise as Paul and Silas did when they were in prison in Acts 16.25. He's going to praise him during this storm. No matter the trials, no matter the storms, no matter the circumstances, no matter the hardship, He will give God the glory, honor, and praise. He will remember God's faithfulness in the past. He will say as the psalmist here that, that the Lord will command His loving kindness in the day, that He is not consumed, that He is not destroyed, and at night He will sing about it. So not only will God's command, but not only will God command his love and kindness in the daytime, but he says that my prayer unto the God of my life. Someone says that prayer and praise go hand in hand. His prayer will be to the Almighty. He acknowledges God's power over these storms. These storms may be drowning him, the waves overwhelming him, he's crying out for help. He's still longing for the Lord. He knows that God is the Almighty God and he has the power to command these storms to cease and to be silent. It is God who has given him life and it's God who preserves him. It is only through God's power that he make it through the day. It is only God's power that these storms will be silent. David said in Psalm 27, 1, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? 
Even though he thinks that God has forgotten about him, he will still cry out to him. He'll still wait for him. He still has this confidence in him. Basically, he's saying, I still have faith and God will deliver and bless me again. Too many times we give up. When troubles and trials come our way, we blame God. We say, I'll never serve him again. He's not a God of love. He's not a God of mercy. God would not do this if he loved me. Instead of saying, God, I don't understand what you're doing, but I will have faith. I will continue to cry out to you. Lord, I feel like you have forgotten me, but my confidence and my hope is still in you. The storm rages around him, but with God he has nothing to fear. God is his light, whom shall he fear? God is the strength of his life, but with God he has nothing to fear. His life is hidden in Christ, in Colossians 3.3. 3. It is in God that we live and move and have our being, in Acts 17.28. Everything we do here on earth, because God has given us the strength and the ability and the opportunity to do so. It's not by our own strength, it's not by our own smarts, it's not by our own ingenuity. It is by God Almighty who allows these things for us to do these things. God is the Almighty God. What can these storms do to him that God would not allow to do to him? If he lives or dies, he is God's. He has nothing to fear. But he will pour out his complaint to the Lord. He says, he will say to, him, to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Millions of other people have asked the same question. God, why have you forgotten me? There's times during these storms when waves are overwhelming us and we feel that God has forgotten us. There are times when we really need Him it seems that He cannot be found. He wants to know why has God ceased to care in times like this. How many of us have felt that way? Whatever may, whatever may have happened in our lives, or what is happening in our lives, we're saying, God, why, where are you? We say, God must have ceased to care since all these trials come into my life. But since the Lord is his rock, his fortress, his deliverer, his God, his strength, and whom he will trust, his buckler, his horn of salvation, and his high tower, Psalm 18, 2, why did these storms rage against me? When these things come upon him, we can take refuge in God that he will protect us during these times. And as we looked at several weeks ago, our salvation is secure in Christ. No matter what happens in our life, God will never forget about us. He will never forsake us. He will never abandon us. We are his whether we live or die. We are His. It is times like this that God seems to be silent in Psalm 28, 1, and we begin to panic. But we seem to forget, just as the psalmist did, that God is our rock, He is our defense, He is our refuge, He is our salvation. We should not be moved by these storms. We should look at them. It's okay. I said, what's going on? But there's nothing that my God cannot handle. I go to Him. I trust in Him, whatever may happen. These storms should not cause us to doubt, fear, worry, or lose heart. When we have our God to, to turn to, we can turn to Him. We should turn to Him each and every time. Proud to Him, lifted up to Him. We should not think for one minute that God has forgotten us or forsaken us or abandoned us. 
The psalmist says, why do I go mourning? Because of the stress of my enemies. I mean, why does he go around mourning? Because, I mean, his enemies are persecuting him. His enemies are hating him. Why do I go around mourning? God, he's questioning God, why am I like this? Why is this happening to me? He says, like a shattering in his bones, his enemies, his adversaries, cause distress by saying all day long, where is your God? And when you hear this day after day after day, it begins to wear you down because you to, to distress, because you to doubt, it causes you to question. Maybe, maybe it causes us to say, God, where are you? I keep hearing this, but I'm not seeing you. I'm not seeing your hand. I'm not seeing you worry. You're silent. As someone once said, it's during the test, then when the teacher is silent. His troubles and trials, God is silent, and that's where our faith is tested. So earlier, the words, where is your God, brought him to weeping. He said, now it is crushing him. He compares their words to a fatal wound in his bones. He says, a sword cuts and dismembers He feels that the, the words of his enemies are doing this. He's comparing them to a fatal wound. Someone may question if God is almighty. Why don't he do something about this? How many times have we heard that? How many times have we said, might have said that ourselves? If God is almighty, if God is all powerful, why didn't he stop the drunk from doing his Drinking and, and, and killing a family, and but we seem to forget that man that God has left man to make his own decision. God is not going to force his hand upon us. For these questions, we can come to God with them, we can bring them up to Him, and He hears us. God is Almighty, why doesn't He end these troubles and trials? Why does He allow these storms to rage in our life? God does not promise us that He will uh, keep us from going through storms and our troubles and trials, but that He will be with us. He will strengthen us. How many times have we gone to the, the, the most severe trying time in our life when we look back and we say, I don't know how I did it. But then you sit back and go, God gave me the strength to endure that. He kept me from being destroyed. He protected me even though the waves are crushing down on me. He still delivered me. God allows these things to come in our lives to test our faith. If God does not allow storms to come into our lives, how can we say we have faith? It is during times like this that we question, how long will the Lord forgive me? How long will He hide His face from me? Psalm 13, 1, it seemed like these that we, we feel like Jesus while well, he hung on the cross who said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In Psalm 22, 1 and Matthew 27 and Mark 15. We also may think, Why are you so far from helping me? And from the word to my roaring in Psalm 22, 1. It will say with David in Psalm 22, 2. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest me not. And in the night season, and I'm not silent, he said he will continue, continually cry out to God every day, every night. It may seem like God is not hearing him, but he will continue to cry out. Or we may say, on the other hand, oh, uh, God's, or my way is hidden from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from 
uh, my God, in Isaiah 40, 27. He can rest assured that God has not forgotten him. In Psalm 49, I mean Isaiah 49, 15. And the same applies to us. God has not forgotten us. His eye is still upon us. His hand is still guiding. He has not forsaken us. Still with us. Even in the darkest hour of our lives. He is still with us. And so that leads us to our third point here. He hopes in the Lord. In Psalm 42, 11. Again, he rebukes himself for thinking this way. He says, Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquiet in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Again, he is saying, Why are you discouraged? Why are you depressed? Why are you dejected? Heart, why are you in uproar? Why are you so troubled? Why do you, why do you roar like a raging sea? And again, he commands his soul to wait for God, to hope in God. He will praise him for his salvation and his deliverance. He will wait for God to save him from these storms. The Lord is his salvation and his God. And the same is for us to do today. Why does he allow these storms to cause him to be discouraged and depressed? I mean, he has confidence in God to deliver him, so he has nothing to be depressed about. He has nothing to be worried about. He focused on his enemies and his troubles instead of focusing on God. I think many of us have been there and done that. We lose our patience. But when we have to wait for God, it requires patience. Storms may not cease immediately, but we must wait upon the Lord. We cannot make any kind of hasty decision. Continue to seek after Him. Continue to go to Him in prayer. Continue to ask Him what you need to do. In time later, if He has not said anything, he has not laid anything upon your heart on what you need to do, then we are to wait. Troubles comes in waves. Somebody said uh, that usually trouble comes in threes. But sometimes troubles are coming on us like waves and a raging river. They continually overwhelm us. They continue to pound on us. And it seems like there's no end to it. But when we wait for the Lord during these storms, we will have peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. Our troubles and our trials may come through people. They may come through circumstances. They may come unexpectedly. Maybe one small storm may come and then one right after another. Maybe one major storm that brings a lot of havoc. And then after that, some smaller storms. Or it could be small storms, one right after the other. Trouble after trouble, destruction upon destruction, mischief upon mischief. Same way they, they keep coming at us. And there's times that we may have one major storm and we may have calm for a little bit. Or there may be times that we might start off with a few little raindrops. Then after that, you've got the tornado. And then after that, it may be a, a thunderstorm. But one storm brings massive waves that overwhelm us. Another storm may be bringing in smaller waves, but yet we, we still struggle to catch our breath. But when these storms come, we should not allow them to drive us to despair. We should not allow them to cause us to question God's faithfulness. But instead, we should remember God, that we can go to Him, cry out to Him, tell Him what's going on in our lives, 
as thin. We can be confident that God will deliver us. God will be with us. And He will one day deliver us out of these troubles. And when they come to an end, it's not because we made some wise decision, because God commanded them to end. But do not be distracted by the fierceness of the storm or the size of the waves. Instead, trust in the one who can protect us, who is our rock, who is our refuge, who is our defense, who is our stronghold, and he's our refuge. We can turn to him, trust to him, be confident in him. It may seem that God has forgotten us, but rest assured that God is faithful, but we must wait patiently on him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the psalmist's testimony here. We thank you, Lord, that you have not forgotten about us. And Lord, whatever storm we may be going through, whatever troubles and trials are in our lives, we pray that you would strengthen us. Pray that you give us wisdom. Pray, Lord, that, that we can remain patient during these times. And Lord, pray that you would just remind us that you are with us and that we could turn to you and that you are our refuge, our defense, our strong tower, our stronghold. And now we can trust in you and be confident in you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.